So I don't know about my fellow Halo fans in my community, but I'm starting to get a little concerned about Halo Infinite. This game was revealed, what, in 2018 at E3? And we're now coming up on, I think, six years since Halo 5, so it's been a long wait. There was a new Q&A with 343 on YouTube that came out the other day, and some of their answers are not encouraging. I didn't watch it all, but I saw other people cover it, and a lot of questions were asked about some of the finer details in Infinite that, as a longtime Halo fan, kind of disappoint me. I don't think there's been a truly excellent Halo game since Halo 3, so it's been a long time. Halo Reach, I think, was still very good, but didn't quite reach the heights of Halo 3, and then... 343's handling of Halo so far has been, I think, okay to good, but not great. So let me read this article. It, the headline is not what I'm interested in. It's more of the details down below. But, I mean, the headline has an interesting tidbit that I think is cool. It says, Halo Infinite will allow you to push enemies off the game's ring. Yeah, that's pretty neat. I do like the more sandbox-style design of, that they're going for that I feel like hasn't been a thing since... Three, but more so one, because Halo 1 was, the, the each level was gigantic, and it just felt way more freeform than the later games. Like, I think 2 and 3 became more linear. So I'm happy to see that they're going back to the classic sandbox style. But that's not really what I'm here to talk about. Let me just read what it says. It says, when Halo Infinite comes out later this year, it will allow you to do something you've not been able to do. Push enemies off the ring. Yeah, that's cool. But uh, the tidbit of information came from the latest community Q&A Infinite developer 343 Industries held this week via IGN. A fan asked the team if it's possible not going to... Yeah, I don't care about this. Um, oh, and then it says, The fact you'll be able to do that in Infinite reflects a return to a more sandbox-style design philosophy on part of 343 Industries. The team says that they were inspired by levels like the Silent Cartographer, which is one of my favorite and I think con considered one of the best Halo levels of all time, so that's good news. From Combat Evolved to design the game in a way that you could approach an objective with all the tools at your disposal. Yeah, but I would put a little asterisk by all because that's not entirely true. It says, To that end, the world of Halo Infinite will be more immersive with the game featuring a full day and night cycle that will affect how things play out. I like that because if there's like a bunch of outposts, you can uh, wait till nighttime to approach one and... Basically, if you really wanted to, anytime you do a mission, you could, uh, assuming the day and night cycle goes constantly, even in missions, you could basically make every mission a night mission, like that, like the several nighttime sniping missions that have been in past games. So that's pretty neat. At night, for an instance, for instance, you'll see more shield jackals, and you may even catch Grunt sleeping on the job. Following the game's fall release, three four three plans to even add snowstorms and thunderstorms. So, okay, I don't like that how they say that it says they plan to add them here's my biggest concern with this game is they they keep saying it's a 10-year game like it has a 10-year plan but where have we heard that before like I, I'm, I'm afraid it's i don't want it to become i don't want halo to become a game as service i want it to be still story focused part, part of my worry about, about this game is that the, the plot is going to be thin and it'll be more like a far cry type game where it's kind of just a big map and you go and do objectives but there's like a, a very threadbare plot holding it all together. And I don't want Halo to become that. But I mean, how many times have we heard, oh, this is a 10-year plan. We got plans to add stuff. Destiny, Anthem, Marvel's Avengers. I mean, there's a bunch of them. They, they, they always put the cart before the horse and they think that they're going to ride this wave of like microtransactions and stuff for 10 years and not need to make a sequel. But then if you don't have enough content in the at the start of the game then you're not going to get people to stick around. But that really sucks. Like, you'd think something like thunderstorms and snowstorms would be something that you have at launch. Something tells me that, because we all know the game was supposed to come out last year, and I feel like they were not necessarily being rushed, but they had really terrible management at 343. I don't understand why Halo is Xbox's biggest, like, French, their, their flagship franchise, and they have incompetent leadership. Like, what were they doing for six years? I, I feel like they had to start over from scratch after five, kind of, like, didn't people didn't like five. But if you have that long to develop a game, I, I don't think, I, I feel like things are being cut, and I don't like when the term game as service or whatever is, is used as a crutch. Like, that concept is being used as a crutch more and more these days, where they're, they're just like, oh, we'll add it later, it's not going to be there at launch. They rely on the constant internet connection to just keep pushing off patches and additions to the game until later. It's not like the good old days where you'd buy a game and it would be feature complete at launch and then you would just get 
additions added on. It sucks. But yeah, I would have loved, like, could you imagine if you're playing Red Dead Redemption 2 and you're you're running around on your horse and there's, like, no different biomes and there's no weather at all, but then, and then after you finish the game and you've, you're, you're done with the game and you put it away, and then they announce, like, six months to a year later, oh, by the way, we've added thunderstorms and snowstorms. Like, oh, that would have been nice during the game to add some immersion. I'm not going to go back and play this 80-hour game again right away just to experience these things I should have experienced when I played it for the first time. It seems so stupid. Like, if I put, like, tons of hours into this game, and what if I, I what if, say, I get bored of it, and then they're like, oh, we've added storms in. It's like, oh, well, that would have been nice when I played it. So things like that, that's, that's like a new low, I think. Like, some things, little things here and there, like weapons being added later, that's no big deal. But something like a weather system seems a, like a new low for a post-launch thing. I just feel like a lot of these developers are all walking on eggshells after the cyberpunk disaster because they don't want to replicate that. They want to make sure that the game is fully operational when they release it. And I think Microsoft does not want to let them delay it any longer because it was supposed to be out last year. So now it's going to come out to line up with, like, there's no way they're going to delay it again. It's it's going to line up perfectly with the 20th anniversary of Halo. So they can't do any more delays. So I guess some features will be left on the cutting room floor. But yeah, so that sucks. Uh, but then it also says there will also be multiple biomes for players to explore. But what's interesting is I heard there wasn't going to be biomes. So that seems kind of like conflicting information. And then here's the part that irks me the most. And, and the whole community is pretty mad about it. The studio ended up prioritizing some of those features ahead of ones players have come to expect from the series. Dual wielding, for instance, won't be in the game at launch. Quote, we can't do everything. Or actually, I should say, we can't do everything. Lead sandbox designer Quinn Del Hoyo said. Okay, why? We haven't had dual wielding in so long since Halo 3. No, wait, did Reach have it? No, it's 3, right? So what 14 years four and five didn't have it reach had uh elites that that you could see they were dual wielding but you couldn't do it yourself and i'll get to elites in a minute but i mean we all love dual wielding and they their their excuse is that uh it's not balanced and it's it's hard to balance for multiplayer but i just think that's so stupid to not like if if they had it 14 years ago why not keep it and also if if push comes to shove just don't have it in in competitive have it only in social games or um have it be an option in custom games like just keep it out of competitive i don't understand why you're taking away options that used to be there like four and five you could feel the uh and even reach you could you could definitely feel the lack of dual wielding and i miss it and i think a lot of us miss it but so i just don't get these some of these decisions maybe i mean never say never maybe because they claim again a 10-year plan maybe one day they'll add it it seems like something that shouldn't be that hard to implement, especially only in custom games. But, I mean, this article doesn't say it, but I've seen other things now about uh, some more questions that were asked in it. I probably should have watched that whole thing before making this video, but maybe I'll make a follow-up video. I'll definitely be covering Halo Infinite before and after it launches. But another big uh, omission to this game, which stings a lot, is, once again, no more playable elites. <sighs> it hasn't been quite as long without them as uh dual wielding because they were in reach you could play as elites so it's been 11 years but and it's not like 343 can't do it i mean if i want to be completely accurate technically 343 implemented playable elites in their halo 2 anniversary multiplayer so that was in the master chief collection's original launch in 2014 so it hasn't been since 2010 technically but it's not like they can't do it uh, again, it may maybe it's a balancing thing. They don't want because I remember back in the day, it was much harder to get headshots on elites, and that's why people played as them a lot. And it's just fun for machinima. Like people that make machinimas love all these options, having the ability to play as different species. I'd love to see. I mean, this could be a little sleight of hand they're doing, and maybe it's not an elite that you can play as, but maybe it's a brute. Like you know how great it would be to play as a brute. I'd love to play as. I'd love a thing kind of like Doom. 2016's multiplayer or even their creator mode where you can or even their newest multiplayer where you can play as a revenant and a mancubus and all this all the different demons i would adore and i think a lot of the halo fan base would adore the ability to if only like if it's just in custom games so be it 
but play as a grunt, play as a brute, play as an elite, play as a Promethean. Like, that would be really cool. You know, all the different modes you could have for that. And I, th I think people have said that they confirmed, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think I read that they confirmed a Battle Royale, which I'm not opposed to having, even though if that if that's true and they did confirm it, it kind of, it's, they lied to us because years ago when they asked about it, they all that they said was, nope, the only BR in this game is a battle rifle. But if, like, Halo could lend itself well to a, BR, uh, to a battle royale, think about this. Imagine you're, when you drop into the map, I mean, what else would you be doing except for falling in ODST, ODST drop pods? That'd be sweet. Like, you got some capital ships and you drop out of them in pods. I mean, that's just perfect for the Halo universe. And then the the uh, the circle, the closing circle, could be like insane amounts of flood. Think about how cool that'd be. You just got an encircling swarm of flood that gets smaller and smaller. So it can work. But what I don't want to happen is them prioritizing that mode and and because uh, that's what hap that's what's happening with Call of Duty is these games that implement a battle royale. All their development focus goes onto that mode, and they neglect their classic modes. Like I don't want them to do a battle royale. In play, uh, to replace like big team battle like you got to keep classic big team battle i'd like it in addition to don't do it in favor of but i mean back to elites not being in the game yeah it's disappointing the machinima people are going to be not very happy about it let's hope that with the whole like 10 year development plan let's hope that actually is a thing that and another concerning thing about the 10 year plan thing is you know how fast graphics like technology changes a lot in 10 years so I mean, just look at GTA V. That game is still getting updates now, and it's seven years old, and it's definitely starting to show its age in terms of graphics. Like, look at Red Dead Redemption 2. That's their last game. The player models especially look way better in that game. So you don't want to be playing the same game for 10 years, I think, without at least doing some kind of graphical overhaul. Like, unless the game starts off with like incredible graphics, maybe it could last 10 years. And we are reaching a point now where graphics can't really get that much better yeah lighting can and, and different methods of, like for that but you don't really see that big of a, uh, a leap with graphics anymore so maybe it'll work but i mean um, they have definitely have to improve it from the last time they showed it the last time had a huge backlash with how it looked because again i think this is a mistake they're holding on to the xbox one that's a that's seven year hardware and they're making it to the game to where it can run on that and i i think they need to dump it you you should have dumped the original Xbox One, and developed it, it developed exclusively for the next gen. I know it's gonna it's gonna you're gonna lose a big install base, but for the sake of the game and the game's future, I think you should. Because if you have say, what if you're ten years into this supposed ten year plan, or even five years, like you're still running a game that is already made for seven year hardware. So ten years in, you're running a ten year old game intended to run on seventeen year old hardware. Think about that. So you're already behind the ball. So unless they're going to, over time, like every few years, improve the graphics with, somehow with, with uh, updates. I, I feel like that's gonna that's the future, though, for better or for worse. Games that are like, like quote-unquote live services or whatever, even though they claim Halo Infinite's not one, but we'll see. They claim those games are, like, I think the, well, I think the future of them, like I said, for better or for worse, is just iterating upon them. Instead of making sequels, just iterating over time like Fortnite does dare I invoke that word, uh, iterate upon it, and then also improve the graphics. Like, as technology improves, as you can make the game look better, you maybe update some of the 3D models, uh, improve the lighting. So it's essentially an alpha or a beta that's constantly worked on, like Minecraft. Like, obviously, that's why there won't be a Minecraft 2. Well, in before there's a Minecraft 2 and I have to eat my words. But So yeah, if that's what they're planning, that that can work, yeah, like if, if they keep updating it, but We'll have to see how this game even... Because we've only seen a little bit of gameplay. So we don't really understand completely how this game works and functions. So we'll have to wait and see for E3 probably. Unfortunately, it's probably going to be an online event again. But yeah, to my fellow Halo fans, does this disappoint you? Like, does it? I, I think it's highly disappointing that there's no Elites or uh, Dual Wielding asterisk at launch. But it would have been nice. And... If I, to be honest, I don't see dual wielding ever coming, but elites, maybe. Like if we get invasion mode back, oh man, I'd love that. Invasion mode and reach was so fun. 
But are you guys disappointed in this news? Do you Did you not care about playing as elites, or did you not care about dual wielding? Let me know in the comments. Are you worried about this game at all? Like, I ha like I'm still holding out hope. I'm still, I still want to be optimistic about it, because we've been burned a lot, but I, I have faith that 343 is, has learned from a lot of their mistakes. Just the, the art style alone shows me that they've been listening to feedback for all these years. So they, I feel like they are more open to the community and developing the game alongside the community. And you got Joe Staten back at the studio. So I want to remain re, uh, remain optimistic, but there are some, some things that worry me. It's still my most anticipated game of the year. Let me know what features you'd like to see in Infinite. What do you think about a BR in Halo? Do you like my ideas for it? Do you actually think the 10-year plan will come to pass or not? Because I don't. And let me know what your favorite Halo game is in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.